It's early December. A man wakes up at exactly 6 a.m. to the same alarm he's awoken to for years. He is tall as he stands to his full height, with short-kept black hair and a beard cut only a little higher in comparison. He takes his morning shower and dresses with an efficiency that is clearly practiced, but never cared for. As he sits down for breakfast, toast, lightly buttered, his hand jolts back as it lands on a needle on the table. After putting his plate to the side, he carefully pinches the needle and looks it over. Probably the one he lost last week, though how it got here, he didn't want to bother guessing. He took the time to bring it back to his sewing chest before returning to his meal. Within an hour of waking up, the man commutes across town. The damage done to Teal Wing had almost healed over the last half a year, and so his exciting detour to work was but a memory. He walks through the doors, greets the morning staff, and buckles over violently to the ground the moment he passes the front desk. Heads in the room swivel to see the man hunched over, spewing pink sludge from his mouth, before he keels over dead. That night the coroner would quickly discover that the man's organs were liquefied over the course of the morning, and it wouldn't be for another few days that someone finally found a small prick on his finger that had somehow been sealed with barely a trace. It would be months before anyone found the cause of death after meticulous investigation, and an arrest would never be made. Yet right now, as the man lay dead in a puddle of his own lungs, the killer was right across the street, watching the whole thing. Had anybody laid eyes on them, they would have seen a strange, warm-colored static floating in the air. The voice, rare to hear in the universe, belonged to the messenger. And it's done. He's laughing. Yep. Some say he's well hidden, but I figured out his deal a long time ago. I just left him a little gift, and it did all the work for me. Your is still in it. it is, thanks to me. To think Zeke thought he could just hide it away. The lich is far too powerful a frame to be sealed away like that. Yes, and speaking of not going to waste, I'm sure you can guess that I want that license passed to a very particular person. That's her. Everything, babe. It's helping everything. That girl is the powder keg that keeps on giving, and the lich is the key to making her give quite a bit. In fact, it'll be her biggest explosion yet. It will. Deliverance is the biggest obstacle in the way of connecting us to the Omninet. Once they're gone, it will be a cinch to begin operations here. Oh, but just a quick request. Give it about two weeks. Yeah. This is the kind of present that needs to be at the right place at the right time. I want my little powder keg to be in just the right position. Then, in due time, Meliora will die. Ah, the fifteenth is perfect. Ta! And then, a short click sounds to nobody but them. For a moment, they remain where they are. Ah, but whatever goes as planned, your Omninet will never be the answer Overture needs. There is nothing here that can bring anyone salvation. Nothing save Quinn and a shiny new toy. Their mutters cast to the winds, silent to even the earth. The messenger, or what could have been theoretically seen of them, vanishes into nothing.